What's up guys, welcome back to another video. The last CRT monitor Apple ever made was an absolute work of art, but with its proprietary ADC connector, can it really be used with any modern devices? Well today, we're going to find out. Released July 19th of 2000, the 17-inch studio display CRT with ADC would prove to be the last CRT monitor Apple would ever make, and man did they go out with a bang. The transparent acrylic casing served to show off the beautifully laid out inner workings of its Dimantron cathode ray tube. Unfortunately, that Apple ADC connector means hooking it up to a modern computer is difficult to say the least. Apple never officially made an adapter for this display. But thankfully, an enterprising individual named Jason took it upon himself to design a printed circuit board that acts as kind of a breakout to all the things ADC carries, namely VGA, DVI, USB, and DC power. The only thing you get is the board. All the rest you have to source yourself. For the power supply, I use a third-party model intended for an Epson scanner that happened to have the 24-volt 5-amp output that I needed. Now, I had never soldered anything in my life before, and while I was able to successfully solder this board together without shorting anything out, this may very well take the cake as the most tedious thing I have ever done in my entire life. Once the board was together, I cut the 4-pin DIN connector off the end of the power supply, and carefully peeled back the sheath that held the wires while also trying not to gore myself. Once that was done, I just had to solder the three wires to their respective spots on the board, and we should be good to go. For a test, I hooked it up to my PowerBook G4 and fired it up. About five seconds later, the PowerBook crashed. No harm seems to have been done though, so let's try turning the power book on before connecting the display. And it worked. Nope. Still crashes. So let's try my daily driver, the Dell Precision M6700. It actually seems to work just fine. So what's up with the crashing? Well, I didn't install a capacitor that's supposed to be on the PCB's data circuit because I don't want to buy 100 of them just to get the one that I need. So with that, I'm guessing it would work fine with the PowerBook. But the geometry still needed adjusting, and that can only be done inside early versions of OS X, so I figured I'd give it a shot with my late 2005 PowerMac G5 and a VGA to DVI adapter to see if somehow maybe that setup would let me use it with an old PowerPC Mac. And surprise, surprise, there's a lot of surprises in this video, it works like a charm. All the resolutions are recognized, the geometry adjustment works as it should, and shockingly, there's even a software control for adjusting the convergence, which I thought could only be done by turning the rings on the neck of the tube. I spent about 10 minutes fiddling with the geometry, which thankfully is persistent across multiple devices, meaning when I plug my Windows laptop back in, all of my geometry adjustments affect the PC the same way. But I noticed the focus was a bit off, and Apple didn't have a software adjustment for this, so it was surgery time. The monitor comes apart fairly easily if you've got the right sized Allen wrench, and it seems I'm not the first to open it up, because there were some scratches on the acrylic RF shield inside. These two knobs on the flyback transformer here are what adjust the focus. Pro-grade CRT monitors like this one usually have separate adjustments for vertical and horizontal focus, while cheaper monitors just have one adjustment for overall focus. You can see the effect as I turn them here. It wasn't out by very much, but late model high-end CRTs are so sharp when they're focused properly, so when I get a new one, I always make sure it's spot on. Back over on Windows, it's time to evaluate the color. Now, supposedly this monitor has something that keeps its colors calibrated automatically. If I had to guess, it probably does this by running voltage checks on various points on the electron guns. 
but its color temperature was set to about 10,000 kelvins, and the calibration honestly wasn't that great, so the colorometer here actually made a big improvement. Something that surprised me though was the black levels. I have never seen a display with blacks this dark that wasn't an OLED. My colorometer measured them at 0.02 nits. That's 10 times darker than my plasma TV, and almost 50 times darker than my LCD laptop. Needless to say, this made for a stellar viewing experience, despite the display only covering about 78% of the sRGB color gamut. Something that is kind of a bummer with this monitor is that it doesn't support VESA VGA timings, meaning that a 480p 60Hz VGA signal from something like a Sega Dreamcast just doesn't work. The display just stays black. Actually, when you don't have it hooked up to a Mac running Leopard or older, Snow Leopard might work but I didn't test it, you only get two resolution and refresh options. 1280 by 1024 at 75 Hz and 1600 by 1200 at 65 Hz. Another downside, hilariously, this monitor has a BTU rating, 386 BTUs to be precise, which means it gets pretty cozy actually and can raise the temperature in a small room. All in all, I'm glad to have this work of art connected to a modern computer, and it is definitely going on my main setup. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you get notified when I post new videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.